Hello my dear friends and welcome to my morning coffee and a new art journal video. It has been a while since I made a proper art journal spread. Today I am picking up an old idea that I got while discussing ideas for the Artsy Arabia collection by Art by Marlene. I think I had a chat in the comments with Jennifer and said I wanted to do an Atlantis themed project and she shared me on. Much time has passed but now is the time to do it. But before we start let me show you what my husband got me for my birthday. He got me the full set of Karin Brush Marker Pro. They come in this lovely box since they are made to be stored upright. I always swatch my new products and here you can see the vibrant and highly pigmented colors. Happy birthday to me indeed. They are super juicy with a firm fine pointed brush nib and I really enjoyed coloring with them and getting to know them. But enough about, about me and my markers. Let's dive, pun intended, right in to today's project. So I picked out some old and some new Art by Marlene stamps including many from the sophisticated collection The Artsy Arabia Houses, one of, one of my old time favorite stamp sets and a new mermaid set. I won't use everything from every set, but pick and choose what will fit in to my vision. I'm starting with coloring the Artsy Arabia houses and before I bring out those Karin Brush Marker Pros for the first time, I bring out my Starry Colors palette and color in everything I want to be in gold first. Because the Karin markers are so juicy and the flow of color so quick, I start off by scribbling the markers on an acrylic block and pick up color with a brush. If you feel stressed by the juicy markers, that is the way to go. But I am impatient and mostly don't mind a quick flow of color, so after a while I just started coloring with the markers directly to paper. There is no right or wrong with these things, only what makes you the most comfortable. But with these tiny detailed images I had to work quickly and that doesn't bother me at all. Coloring these houses was just a fun way to get to know these markers and I didn't care much about the shadows and the highlights because the details are so small so my focus was more about containing the color within the lines. So I have all the houses I need and I move on to this amazing puffer fish. Puffy fish. <laughs> I don't know. I colored from dark to light, mapping out my shadows with my darkest, blending the dark out with my medium shades and blending and getting my highlights with my lightest shade. Next is this scuba diving woman and I wanted most images to have details in gold and for her it was her air tank colored in gold. Then I moved on to her striped bathing suit with a favorite color combination of teal and red, placing my darkest colors at the beginning and end of each stripe to give her an even rounder shape. I picked a couple of skin tone markers and since this lady remind me of, well, me, I gave her a light complexion with a hint of a tan. I am almost translucent in winter time and don't easily get a tan, but there are some artistic freedom taken in my projects if you haven't noticed by now. <laughs> since I have long brown hair, I made her a brunette and gave her red swimming feet. 
feet. If you know of any other way to express the fins on her feet in English, do enlighten me. I do love this fish that make me think of Artsy Arabia underwater. This amazing crab got yellow and orange flowers and I used four red orange shades for his body working from dark to light. I colored his little heart with gold just to tie the crab to everything else. I colored the seahorse with pink and purple shades and for her horn I used gold, of course. I used the same red, orange and yellow colors as I used on the earlier puffy fish, working from the dark shadows to the light highlights. Further on I will also give him a teal turquoise eye flower. Working my way through all my coloring, I color some seashells, starfish and mini fishes. For this beauty I wanted red flaming hair with yellow and orange highlights. For her top and fish tail I used four shades of blue and teal and for her skin tone I used the same combo as I used on the scuba diving lady. Ok, so now we're moving into new territory with a background painted with acrylic paint from Dina Wakely. Mostly blues and teals, but also lime, yellow and white. I find two pages in my big Art by Marlene art journal and stick them together with painter's tape on the back side. Should you hear anything in the background, it's my son playing video games and impersonating some kind of bird. So, to be completely honest, I would do this differently a second time, but let's dive in and I will explain as we go. Acry acrylics aren't my safe space in crafting and certainly not painting, but I start by adding strings of color horizontally and then I use a large flat brush to spread and blend the colors. Wanting it to look like the sea, I wanted both light and darkness and the sun shining on the water seen from the bottom of the ocean.
When I have a base coat, I go in and make a half hazard oval for a sun and scribbly random lines of white, yellow and blue to get that perspective from the bottom. If I do it again, I would try to use a sponge for some things, for softer edges and lines, but I don't know. What I wanted most was this contrast between an acrylic painted background and the artsy quirkiness of the images. I add sun rays and make lines marking the bottom of the sea. It is hard to get the whole background in frame for filming, so forgive me when I don't succeed. Next, I want to create kind of a dome over the Artsy Arabia Atlantis houses, so I cut a dome shape from copy paper to use as a mask, and I bring out gold acrylic paint. I dilute the gold paint with water and splatter over the mask on the sides and above, so it will seem like a domed city with gold splatters marking its beginning. I also make little gold splatters on the upper half of the background to tie them together. To add more interest to the background I bring out texture paste and gold embossing powder along with a seaweed stencil. I push texture paste through the stencil along the side edges and cover the paste with gold embossing powder. If you want a smoother result, you just wait for the paste to dry before heating the embossing powder, but I love the bubbly speckled and messy look, so I heat it immediately. And I add these gold seaweeds coming in from the sides of both background halves. Sometimes the powder doesn't stick perfectly to the paste, but I just go in with an embossing pen, adding the sticky ink again to the spots that need it, and cover with powder and melt again. Okay, so I have all the gold seaweed I want and now it's time to add Atlantis. Using foam squares for dimension and gluing some houses flat, I build my city inside that dome.
When I have my city, I start adding seashells and starfish along the bottom using clips to hold things in place until the glue dries. Next, I glue down my crab, my seahorse and the diving lady. The two puffy fishes get a placing and between them I place my amazing mermaid looking down on the city. It's now time to add smaller fishes all over my pages. When most of my images are in place, I use scissors to cut them apart and my diving lady becomes one more thing that unifies my pages. I find a Van Morrison quote in the new mermaid set and heat emboss it in gold saying, smell the sea and feel the sky. Let your soul and spirit fly. Not really knowing how to incorporate my quote, I brought out a few blue markers and blend them together over the quote because, because heat embossing will resist the water-based markers. Next, I bring out my embossing ink pad and the gold embossing powder again and rub the ink pad over the edges of the quote. I cover the ink with gold embossing powder and melt with my heat tool. This is where we're at at the moment and I add my quote with foam tape in the middle right above the city. When the quote is in place I add even more mini fishes around the quote and off camera I also added white dots with a gel pen among the gold splashes over the dome to bring it out more. I finally get to put my art journal pages in the art journal. And the last detail is glossy accents. I put it over the fish's eyes, in the mermaid's hair, on the diver's goggles and I make many, many tiny domed and glossy dots along the outside of the domed city. And now these mixed media art by Marlene underwater pages are finished. Thank you so much for being here with me. Until the next time. Happy crafting!